Hello dear friends, welcome back to another video in Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this video we will do something a little bit different. We are not reviewing an aircraft, we are not reviewing or doing a tutorial flight etc. But we will be looking at something that was released with the 40th year anniversary of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And that is the working title teams. Uh, rendition of GNS 530 GNS430 avionics suite. Uh, we are currently parked at Portland International Airport in the United States. The engines are and the engine is running and we are using the Cessna 172 with the steam gauges from the premium deluxe version of the sim. But this uh, avionics suite is also available for some default aircraft in the standard and deluxe version of the sim as well and as far as i have read in the forums and online the third party developers are also working towards integrating this uh, new avionics suite into their uh, third party aircraft so working title team as you probably know has a uh, proven track record when it comes to providing us with uh, greatly coded, modeled uh, avionics, aircraft and improvements or mods. Uh, everybody will probably agree that the RG1000 NXI, which became the core uh, part of the sim now, is or was great. I'm still using it with a lot of joy and it, it made the unit look closer to its real-life counterpart and their mod brought a lot of good functionality into G1000. Uh, they also have the CJ4 which is a fantastic aircraft to fly and the Proline avionics and uh, flight management computer was also custom coded by the working title team and that was also a great mod given to us flight sim uh, community by working title team for free so now they started working on the uh, on their rendition of gns 530 430 suite uh, as you probably have no as you probably know uh, there is another gns 530 that was developed for free by pms 50 team who is the developers behind the gtn 750 but this one, I believe, is a little bit detailed uh, than the PMS-51 and I think it has uh, a little bit more functions and it will greatly advance and become better over time. Remember, this is an early access beta. This is not even a release. This is an early access beta, so expect some bugs, expect some unwanted behavior, but um, this is what we are going to do today. Uh, it is as it is. As is. It, it might have bugs, we might encounter some of those bugs when we are doing this uh, tutorial review, but uh, you, are, you are warned about that. Okay, so what aircraft? You can use if you don't have the premium deluxe version and the Cessna 172 I am sitting in. Uh, you can use the Pleiades Porter and Robin Captain, I believe was the name of the aircraft, in the um, standard version. Um, in the premium deluxe, deluxe, obviously, you have the Cessna 172. Uh, two and I have to look up what aircraft you can use this with uh, if you have the premium version of the sim But uh, also, just to mention, uh, any, any third-party aircraft that's using the standard uh, Asobo autopilot code uh, should be okay with this uh, unit. You should be able to follow a GPS-based flight plan and your autopilot should 
uh, see it and communicate and talk with the working title rendition of GNS 530. I haven't tested this myself, but I have read that the Coronado aircraft that mostly uses the stock Asobo autopilot code is compatible and uh, people did not have any problems but uh, just take that uh, with a pinch of salt because I have not tried this myself anyway I think this is enough talking uh, let's go and fire up the GNS 530 430 and then start talking about this uh, beautiful avionics suit given to us by working title team first thing you'll see is a splash screen and then some informational text uh, GNS 530W copyright 1998-2017 yada 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 and then you'll see the main software version working title 1.0.1 this is how you can tell you have the working title uh, rendition of the GNS 530 and then it will go through some built-in self-test or simulated built-in self-test because that's not real but then you'll you'll be presented with this screen only thing you need to do here is to hit enter to accept ok base map terrain database airport aviation aviation database yada 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 i'm not sure if they are there are plans to use different databases with this unit in the future but for now we can select enter on both units and you'll see some other options here obviously you can cycle through this and see it for yourself but they don't do anything just yet as far as i know so only thing we can do here is to accept and hit ok now when you do that it will display a simulation of acquiring gps satellites and this is what it's doing right now and when it has enough satellites captured it should move to the uh, map screen like we see here here is a bug the aircraft position is not steady it is circling around spinning around its itself uh, so obviously this is expected this is a early access beta so nothing to worry there they will fix this for sure let's talk about the buttons first before we dive into the menus and sub menus and we'll just quickly go over what each button knob does this unit and 430 has two big knobs on the right and left bottom right and left side of the uh, unit left side is for com and vlog com radios and vlog stands for vor localizer so your nav radios and the right side is a cursor and sort of how you navigate in the menus these two big knobs have inner and outer dials i will call the big one inner and the smaller one outer dial and they uh, work independently and do different things we'll talk about that here in a second on the screen left side you have your com frequency you have your standby com frequency VLOC again stands for VOR localizer your basically your navigation radios or nav radios uh, active and standby and then the localizer uh, information from the identifier IPDX this this is auto tuned by the way uh, that's Portland and ILS 10 right right so it's identifying the localizer over here so that's the the basic information on the uh, boot screen or main screen when you boot up the unit uh, this knob helps you change the frequencies so we are at the top now and the standby is highlighted which means we are if we rotate the knob we will be changing the uh, standby frequency and we can make it active how you change the frequency is inner one the big knob changes the decimal or it changes the whole numbers as you see on the screen and the outer one which is the small knob changes the decimal points and when you are happy with your frequency you can push this calm swap button and it will make 
standby active and bring the active into standby. It's kind of same thing works here with the uh, VLOG uh, transfer button or switch button, whatever you want to call it. And there are two little knobs over here that controls the, the audio levels or volume for the arm and nav radios. And this is pushable too, so that when you push that squelch and when you push the um, nav radio volume knob, that's ID. So you'll hear the Morse code of the localizer. All right, so that's good. This also, the knobs have push function. So when you push, as you see here, it says C slash V. So that means it will switch between COM and VLOC uh, radios or frequencies. So pushing this will obviously change it and make the cursor move down and highlight the VLOC frequency, standby frequency. So now I can tune a different station and then transfer it to make it active by using the swap button like so. Alright, so that's that. Let's move this back because I want to keep Portland uh, ILS frequency here for now. We have a set of buttons down below. These are uh, physical buttons. CDI, this will change your CDI source between GPS, which is the uh, RNAV or GPS waypoints if you build a flight plan using the GNS 530 you have to select GPS to be able to fly it if you are flying with nav radios only then you have to have VLOC selected here so that you can follow your navigation instruments radio navigation instruments to get to your destination OBS this is probably not available and the, moment, the, the second I clicked it, a message appeared here, so OBS not available just yet, so it will come back, we'll talk about it. But what it does when it's available is if you are approaching to an airport from a certain heading and if you have tuned a VOR or if you have a flight plan here, OBS button will help you change your course and approach from a different angle. Uh, I have to demonstrate it. I'm not good at explaining in, it in words, but it will come uh, and it will become available in the near future and we'll talk about this later on. Messages, you have seen me doing it, so when you have a message it starts flashing here. Pressing the messages button will bring the active messages and pressing messages button again will continue. Flight plan, self-explanatory, this is where you go to enter your GPS flight plan into GNS 530 or GNS 430. VNAV, this is an advisory VNAV. We'll talk about how we use this here in a little bit when we get to this page. But this is an advisory VNAV that will give you a vertical profile and uh, it will calculate the rate of descent for your uh, target altitude and target position. We'll talk about this here in a little bit. Procedures, self-explanatory, I guess. This is where you go and select your approach, arrival and departure procedures for IFR flight plans that you load into the GNS 530 or GNS 430. Over on this side, you have a range uh, button. Think of this like a, if you click up, you are moving up and zooming out. If you click down while you are moving down and you are zooming in and this can get in very close to show you the taxiways and a silhouette of the airport which is always nice direct to button i think you know what this does this is used to select uh, a waypoint and get to that waypoint directly uh, without following your flight plan or changing it so I think the uh, best way to explain this is if I want to go directly to a waypoint instead of going through a set of waypoints on my flight plan or if I am given instructions by ATC to 
uh, direct to X waypoint. This is where I get and enter that waypoint information and activate uh, so that the unit or the autopilot will fly the aircraft directly to that waypoint. A menu. This will be used to bring up the menu for each pages and sub pages or each page group and the sub pages under that page group. We'll take a look at this in more detail here in a little bit. Clear button works as a backspace button and if you are on a different page like here and if you press and hold clear this will take you to the first nav page. This is the default page so we're, it doesn't matter where you are in the menu. If you press and hold clear, you will be taken back to first nav page. Uh, and then enter is obviously an enter key to confirm our selections. So now let's talk about the menus a little bit. You will be starting at the nav page group when you first start. And this has one, two, three, four, five pages as you see and we are on the first one. This is sort of a map with a um, heading or track indicator here. So our current track is 254, 253. It's changing, but you know, it's a map. Zoom in, zoom out works the way, the same way it works in the second one. And you see some data fields on the corners and they can be changed by using this menu button and going down and to go down you use the bigger or the inner knob I'm sorry outer knob and then uh, you select enter change fields and it will start flashing on one of the fields so this is showing the direct track at the moment if I use the outer knob to scroll I can change this date of field to let's say estimated type or time of arrival I don't have a flight plan so you will not see anything just yet here but this is how you can change these data fields when you make the first selection it will jump to the next one you can keep it as is and keep it at the distance or you can select something different such i want my ground speed here and i want to see the distance maybe here so i will just change that and make it distance and then the last one estimated time and route I'm okay with that or I can just go and uh, select desired track to display that information here. So that's the first nav page. This is a map with information at the four corners. Pressing the cursor will remove my selections or clear will remove that flashing cursor. Sometimes it's pushing the button again sometimes it's clear button so it is not uh, always the same so be, keep that in mind to move on to the next page so let's talk about this a little bit the, the, the outer knob will cycle between different page groups okay and you have I believe or oh, uh, let's count one two, three, and four page groups. And then the inner knob, or the smaller one, will scroll through the sub pages of that page group. So that's how you use this to navigate between different pages. And as I said, again, reminder, if you press and hold clear, this will take you back to the first nav page from wherever you are. So second nav page is actually another map but this time you don't have the information at the corners of the screen but you do have some options here set up the map this is like the group map orientation you want it north up or track up auto zoom landing data avia aviation data etc if you want to turn them on and off to declutter what I mean by that is if I move down and say I don't want to see the aviation data so if I change this to off and select enter and move back that should remove some of this information to make it a little bit clear 
the next page oh by the way you also have the option to see data fields not at the corners but on the side of the screen so if i select this as you see you have the data fields now and you also have the option to change these fields as well but these will be on the side instead of being at the four corners of the screen and you have again four or five uh, different data fields that you can select and choose from different information and it does the same thing when you select the first one it will go to the next pressing enter will move to the next until you're done and when you finished you press clear uh, and that should oh this time it was the push cursor so when you press the push cursor it will clear and then uh, if you wanna take this off the screen you go and say display data fields off yes and it will take it off <clears throat> third page of the nav page group is the relative terrain map everything is showing red here because i am sitting here at portland on the ground so as you start climbing these will change colors to orange and then yellow and then eventually it will go into black when you clear that terrain and this is working like a relative terrain map so uh, that terrain will be displayed relative to your altitude so if you are above the highest elevation here it will start uh, going into this black uh, map view that we have at the down or at the bottom in the GNS 530. Next page of the nav page group is the traffic page. So it is usually coming as turned off. I was playing with this a little bit so that's why. But the first time you come here you will see that standby. And if I press the cursor it will start flashing at ADS off. I can use the, the smaller knob to turn it to on, enter, and now this will display the traffic information around me. You have four different modes here, normal, above, below, and unrestricted. Normal will display the traffic uh, around your aircraft uh, 2700, up to 2700 feet above and below. So that means any aircraft that is in between negative 2700 and positive 2700 altitude relative to your aircraft will be displayed here. Another way to put this is if you are flying at 10,000, the normal mode will show the aircraft uh, up to 12,700 feet and it will not display anything flying above that altitude. Or down to uh, 7300 feet and it will not display anything flying below 7300 feet so that's the normal mode above mode will increase your uh, altitude range above your aircraft so that means you still get to see aircraft that is down to 7300 feet below your aircraft and if they were below lower than 7300 you won't see it but this time the above range becomes 9900 that means if i'm flying at 10000 feet this will display all the aircraft that are within uh, 9900 feet above me up and which means up to 19900 uh, below is kind of the opposite so this time the traffic above you is limited to up to 2700 feet but the traffic below you is now up to 9900 which means if I'm flying at 10,000 I will be able to see any aircraft that is flying from 100 feet to 10,000 because that's the 9900 difference from my altitude and uh, above my aircraft is still going to be 2700 and the last mode if you guessed it yes this is unrestricted so not this means this will display all the aircraft below and above up to 9900 feet so i hope i didn't mess this up and made it clear but this is how this traffic display works when you turn this on 
It will also turn the traffic information on your map screens and you will see the aircraft moving. If I had traffic right now, we would be seeing that traffic on our displays. And the last nav page is the status page that will show you how many satellites are acquired, uh, your current position, the time based on the satellites and then the altitude. All right, so from here we will move to the next page group, which is the waypoint page group. I need to scroll to the back. So this will display information about the waypoints around us. First page being about the airport. So this is now displaying the information about Portland International, its elevation, its position and the available approaches, etc. Second page, if I use the smaller knob is different uh, page with the airport information but this time we see the runways we see the runway information the surface the length the width etc you can make changes here so if i bring the cursor it will highlight the airport and if i select enter it will move to the runway selection and i can now select the different runway 0321 and that will display the information about that runway pictures here here perpendicular to 10 one zero right and uh, two eight right and which is the next one that we can select and we will see the information about that runway this time very pretty handy you can still zoom in and out here so that zoom function works we move to the next one using this that will display all the frequencies at Portland so if I select the Portland again and hit enter, that should take me down to the frequency list. So now I can use the bigger knob to scroll down and see all the frequencies that are displayed here from departure, approach, uh, delivery, tower, unicom, 80s, and then the ILS frequencies for the localizers, etc. So one good thing that you have here is Let's say if I want to tune into the approach, I can highlight the approach frequency, press enter, and it will carry that to my standby comm radio over here. So as you see, one two six decimal minor. Same goes with the. Oops, I'm sorry. I moved the <coughs> page. <coughs> Same goes with the um, other one, one two four decimal three seven. So if I highlight that and press enter, it will be tuned to my standby. Same is true for the localizer frequency. So if I highlight a localizer frequency and press enter, this my time it will be tuned or auto-tuned to my standby V radio, V lock radio or NAV radio. Very handy. If you want to quickly tune to a frequency, you can highlight and then enter and that will make it standby and you only press this button, change to that frequency right there. Okay, so that's the third waypoint page. Let's bring the cursor back, move on. This is uh, the fourth waypoint information page, which will show the available approaches again. Bring up the cursor. By the way, I need to talk about this too. There are two ways of entering information here. You can either uh, scroll the, the smaller knob to go a bit from letter to letter to write what you want there or you see a keyboard symbol here so when you press or click on it with your mouse it will turn to blue and now you can use your keyboard to type the information and then press enter so now we have Portland again this time we are looking at the waypoint information page for approaches so we have ILS 10 left, 10 right, 28 left, 28 right, localizer 21, etc. etc. And if I select one of these and enter, it will be drawn on the screen and I can select the transition to see how it looks like and is it suitable for my flight plan, etc. So very good for approach planning. Next page is sort of the same but this time you will get the information about the arrivals 
<coughs> this also works the same way. You enter the airport information, press enter. You select the arrival you want to see on the map. Enter and then the transition that if you have any you want to transition from your flight plan routing to the arrival and then which runway you are trying to arrive and that will be displayed on the screen and you can also zoom in and on, in and out from here as well so that's the fifth waypoint information page sixth one is about departures again so this will display the departure procedures at the airport you are in next page the intersection information uh, close to us so the closest intersection is Zaplo it's in north northwest USI its position is here and there is a nearest there is a VOR station nearby Bravo Tango Golf and its radial and its distance is displayed here so that's the ins intersection page next one is the NDB page for waypoint information so the closest NDB right, while, right now is Papua November Delta Banks Portland Northwest USA that's position the frequency of the NBC and whether it's broadcasting weather information or not so that's <coughs> the NDB the next one will do the same thing for VORs and the last one will show some user waypoints and uh, information about that waypoint so that's the web waypoint subgroup we'll go to the next subgroup which is the auxiliary subgroup or auxiliary page group and this is kind of a menu that you can use to make different selections as you see not everything is now available they are uh, grayed out sort of or faded which means that menu item is not available but this is what you can expect in the future working title team will be putting all these in place and you will be able to select different things when they are uh, available to us you can use this menu to at least change couple things like the units and position so pressing the cursor will move you to the list and you use the bigger knob to scroll and if I want to change the units, I highlight that and push the curse, uh, pr hit the enter key. And now I have the option to change heading from magnetic to true. We'll stay at magnetic, nautical miles, feet. So there's distance, altitude, pressure. You can select inches, you can select millibars, etc temperature unit celsius fahrenheit and then fuel unit gallons or liters or kilograms whatever you want to use it and you can change these back that's how you make these uh, changes to your units and when you're done press the cursor it will take you back and you can move on and maybe change another one uh, if there is anything else available SPAS selection so SPAS as far as I can tell you stands for satellite based augmentation system and this menu gives you some options about uh, different satellite based information systems I'm not gonna dive into this but you can turn them on and off uh, we'll talk maybe we'll talk about this in a different video but I'm not gonna start talking about this and confuse you guys about what this means all right this is the auxiliary menu let's move on to the next one which will be our nearest menu so this has four pages sub pages or and this will give you information about the nearest airport so portland uh, kilo victor uniform oscar Whiskey Alpha 81, Whiskey 56. These are all the closest or nearby airports. <laughs> what this helps with is uh, you can highlight the information. And right now I'm going to move on to a different one. So, sorry, wrong page again. So I will highlight one and then. 
use the outer knob to scroll for example if I want to see the information about this airport I can come here and here is hit enter it will take me to the waypoint information page it will show the Pearson field Vancouver Washington and Arnav position elevation I can go and check the other pages for available runways frequencies approaches arrivals departures etc and as you see here the done is flashing so when I'm done I can select yes I am done and it will take me back anywhere in the unit if you highlight the frequency so this is the tower this is a calm frequency so if I select enter it will tune it to the uh, standby calm radio okay so this is the nearest airports Next one is the nearest intersections. Again, pushing the cursor and selecting enter will give us information about that intersection. When we are done, we can select enter and it will take us back. And you can cycle through all the intersections that are close to you to see information about them if you are curious. Next nearest page is the nearest NDB. If I push the cursor, I can now use the bigger knob to scroll up and down. And as you see, this is Lima Whiskey Golf. And if I select enter, now I will see the information about this NDB station. Lewisburg, Corvallis, Northwest, Northwest USA. The frequency is this. It doesn't broadcast weather information and this is its position. When I'm done, I select enter and it will take me back. And the last page of the nearest information is the nearest VORs. This might be very handy if you are flying from nav radio to... If you are using your nav radios and flying from VOR to VOR, this might become very handy. So again, same thing happens here. Push to, push to bring the cursor and select your the one that you want to get some information about. Highlight the name, select enter. This will show the information about the VOR station. If you highlight the frequency though and hit enter because this is now a nav frequency it will tune it to the standby of the VLOC radio or VOR localizer radio or my radio navigation uh, or radio nav radio Gosh, I can't speak today as you see 117 decimal few or 112 decimal 3 it's easier to tune this way and make it active if you want to and you will get the identifier, Lima Tango Juliet, radial 249, and then distance is 63.3 nautical miles. So you get the information about the VOR when you tune it down below as well. So that's the last nearest page, and that's the last of our pages. So if I remove the cursor, these are all the pages that are available to us. And I will stay at the nav page and what we will do here uh, right now is we'll take a look at how to plan a flight using this uh, unit GNS530 and see how we can enter the waypoints, departures, arrivals, etc. Okay, so it's now time to start our flight planning. So I will throw a random route. I haven't generated a flight plan, but I just wanted to show you the steps. And if you have a valid flight plan, you generate it through SimBrief, whatever flight planning software you are using. Uh, this should help you enter that flight plan. But don't worry about the departure and destination because it will look a little bit funny. I am doing this to just to show you how to enter those information. But to enter a flight plan, we will select the FPL button here, and this will uh, bring us to a blank, empty-ish page. We bring the cursor by pressing the right knob, and first thing we need to do is enter our departure, which is Portland. So I scroll one on the inner or smaller knob, and it will bring this, and I can always highlight the keyboard symbol and then use my keyboard to type Kilo Papa Delta X-Ray that's Portland and I can select enter to accept my departure 
and my destination I will just go crazy here again do the same thing scroll this once and then when you have the pop-up box select the keyboard symbol and we are going to San Francisco ASFO there we go and that was a bug or something I did wrong so though, never mind that please San Francisco we will enter now this is my departure and destination and it's also displayed here so now I want to enter waypoints in between and how do I do that so I need to highlight the waypoint that I have on my flight plan that I want my other waypoint I'm about to enter to go before this so if I highlight this it will be entered before San Francisco if I highlight Portland it will be entered before Portland that's how this system works to enter a waypoint again we use the smaller knob to scroll and now I need to uh, find a waypoint that I can use just to give you guys an example so the example there is well a lot of VOR stand uh, around around us and that's what I'm thinking I will be using we will use the big or Bravo Tango Golf VOR station 116.60 so we will highlight the keyboard and this is just a mock waypoint I'm just throwing this or pulling them out of thin air if you will Bravo Tango Golf that's battleground view taken I believe or VOR uh, we will select this and enter and now the battleground is entered before San Francisco so if I keep entering more waypoints why San Francisco is highlighted it will come before that and it will build my flight plan again I need to find another mock waypoint here and I have India Mike Julia Yulu Uniform Sierra so that's a Arnel waypoint I will enter that by first deleting this and India Mike Julia Uniform Sierra and enter and that will enter that as a as another waypoint and I can use my 430 to kind of zoom out and see the the map and as you see the two waypoints I entered are displayed here which uh, which makes sense so let's say these are the waypoints I have in my flight plan this is just imaginary I'm just assuming they are and I want to select my procedures so the procedures page is used to do that I want to select my departure first I will hit select highlight and enter and this will display all the available departures and let's say I want to do uh, PTLD2 or Papa Tango Lima Delta 2 departure if I select enter I want to depart from runway 10 right and that will then jump and say do you want to load this yes I want to load this and it will populate all the waypoints of that uh, departure or into our into my flight plan okay so now I need to select my arrival and approach I'll do the same thing select the procedures menu go to arrival select enter I want to use Ellen's 6 arrival and I'm fine with a uh, Bauzo transition and yes I am going to land to runway 03 enter and load this and it will load all the waypoints in between uh, for me after uh, images this is the, the waypoint we entered if you remember it will now say en route waypoints are this this is the arrival initial fix and then if I scroll down there are one two three initial fixes depending on which one is yours I don't know how you decide this but you have to see the charts to decide which one is your initial fix because this might be relative to different transitions etc 
and then you go into Portland but we don't have our approach selected so and the man sec over here means you have a many many manual sequence or vectors to your final let's see if we can select the BTJ BTG transition and get rid of this manual sequence when we are selecting our approach so last step is to select our approach and we want to do that's not approaches into Portland though hold on hold on let's take a look here where is my cursor I don't want to select Portland approaches I want to highlight my destination airport but this should oh I know what happened here so be it you got the idea look at my departure and destination because I selected this uh, I can change this and make it San Francisco again and this is good so I can show you how can you, you can remove a selected oops waypoint or selected approach so now I have Portland here how do I delete this so I go to into menu you can delete the delete the entire flight plan by this if you want to or you can come here and select the clear key and it will remove just the waypoint yes I want to remove this now I have San Francisco here again I want to go into procedures and I want to select my approach and take a look at this it is showing uh, Portland so I need to change this to San Francisco ASFO interesting enter I will do an ILS to whatever let's say 19 left and we will use a CCR transition there we go so now we can load the approach and you'll get a warning GPS guidance is for monitoring only loading do you want to load the approach yes I want to load the approach and this is an ILS approach so this is not an RNAV so the aircraft will need to switch to VLOG from GPS to fly that flight plan there we go is depart from Portland we have a manual sequence or vectors out of Portland and then we are en route for Bravo Tango Golf and India Mike Juliet Uniform Sierra and our arrival starts from there and then our approach starts after that and we have an initial fix uh, final fix missed approach etc displayed next to the waypoints this is how you enter a flight plan last thing I want to show is when we have the flight plan now we can talk about VNAV this makes more sense when we are up in the air but for now I'll show what this means so let's say let's take a look at our flight plan for a second here and the other easy way to do this is uh, let's say shake waypoint is our final fix right so I want to be at the altitude that I'm going to capture the glide slope by by the time I get to this waypoint or at least two one or two miles before this waypoint just to be ready to capture the glide slope so to make this and get some advisory VNAV remember the waypoint we go to the VNAV Push the cursor. I want to be at, let's say, 3000 feet above mean sea level. Right, scroll, keep scrolling, enter. And I want to be there at two miles before. And I don't want to do it for BTG but I want to go and select shake so I want to be there and somehow that two miles I selected is gone now so this is this is also a bug looks like it so zero on two enter 
and then before shake and this will give me a vertical profile so if I was up in the air flying this will display the vertical speed required or this will give me a, a top of descent calculation based on my vertical speed so we need to show this or I need to show this when I'm up in the air but this is how you use this advisor VNAV to calculate the top of descent and descend accordingly to get to your destination on time Anyways, there are some crazy jets outside. I'm not sure what FSLTL is doing, but it is doing definitely something that it, not, it is not supposed to be doing. I hear some weird engines, noises or sounds, uh, whatever. So this is the, the information. We have a message, set course to 103, so that's the first waypoint, and that's what the message is about. I can clear this, I believe. Anyway. But this is just the very basic demonstration review and function discovery of GNS 530 430 by working title team and how I like to use these units is I usually keep the smaller one on either the traffic page and you see the traffic now I was talking about this and if I go over here and bring the traffic page I see the traffic here too but I'm not sure why I'm not seeing that same traffic on this page because that should be displayed here oh I am seeing them right now the range was not big enough to display that traffic so now I see the traffic uh, about me because I have selected above and it's also displayed on my map it was nice to be able to show this to you guys I usually keep this at the traffic page and this will be on the nav page or any different page if I'm interested in some information but this is how I use this or oh, the second way of I use this is I keep this at the map and then I change this to the flight plan so that I know the waypoints and what waypoint is the next one etc so you can find your own way of using this unit I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I tried to keep it short, but there was a lot of information that I had to share. So it became a little bit longer than my usual videos, but I wanted to share enough details about this beautiful avionics suit that is starting to take shape in Microsoft Flight Sim Simulator with the help of working title team. And I hope this will become a great addition to our uh, virtual hangars or virt our virtual aircraft thank you very much for being here if you liked the video please consider giving it a like and if you stumbled upon this video and not a channel subscriber please take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button uh, that helps a lot and uh, helps me tremendously so I would appreciate your time if you take a couple seconds to hit that subscribe button Thank you very much and I'll be seeing you in the next video.